Okay, first one's kind of a general question on systems and components. Explain how effectiveness is calculated in ERVs and HRVs. So this is a pretty common question that comes up, distinguishing energy recovery from heat recovery. So heat recovery would be something like an air-to-air -air heat exchanger, where we have the exchange of sensible heat, so that's driving temperature change. Whereas energy recovery would be a case where there's an exchange of not only sensible heat, but also latent heat. And that allows us to calculate the effectiveness in terms of the, um, the enthalpy, which incorporates both the sensible and the latent. So we call that the total effectiveness. <clears throat> So let's draw a little picture of what that looks like. And I'm not necessarily committed to drawing exactly what's in the reference handbook. I don't want any of us to get too attached to the exact way that things are presented there. What I'm more interested in is that we have concepts in our head that we can draw upon at any time. So when I draw this, my, my hope for you is that you could draw this too, and that this just kind of lives in your brain and it's available and you can reason through it. I'm much more interested in the critical thinking than I am in formulas because the formulas will follow. That's really no trouble at all once this is, uh, is available for you. So let's imagine we have our, I'll call it heat recovery device or energy recovery device because it could be either type, right? It could be the, the um, <clears throat> excuse me, sensible only or latent as well. And I'm gonna number these arbitrarily. Let's say that the entering air is one, that's the outside air. And then that's gonna get uh, either cooled or heated depending on if you're in winter or summer operation. And um, then state two will be the supply air. So that's after having been uh, heated or cooled. And then the air that's being given up, that's leaving the building will be state three. That We'll call that the return air. Sometimes that's the recirculated air but that's the air that's going to become exhaust air. So we'll use EA for that, and that'll be our state four. And again, I'm not attached to any particular nomenclature that may or may not be in the reference handbook. Some of these may align, some may not. I'm pretty sure this roughly aligns, um, but this is the idea of what's happening. And, th and that's really what I want you to take away. Okay. so. How do you calculate the effectiveness of this? Well, let's start with the sensible effectiveness. So the sensible effectiveness doesn't necessarily imply that it's a heat recovery device specifically, it might be, or you might just be finding the sensible effectiveness of an energy recovery device. So it could be an enthalpy wheel, it could be sensible and latent, but for whatever reason, the problem is asking you to calculate the sensible effectiveness. <clears throat> So what that means is that we're only going to use temperatures because we're only interested in the transfer of sensible energy, sensible heat. And then the question is, how should that ratio be set up? And the way I like to remember this is it's what you actually get out of the system as a fraction of what you could get. So what's the maximum? Mm -hmm. let's, let's imagine it's a winter operation. And we have a case where uh, we have cold outside air and it's being preheated by the inside air that's being exhausted. So <clears throat> the temperature difference between state one and state three, the warm inside air and the cold outside air, is the maximum possible reduction that we could observe, or actually not reduction, heating, the, the increase. So if it's like, you know, 30 degrees outside and 70 degrees inside, our ideal case, our, our um, you know, perfect scenario would be that we're able to heat this outside air all the way up to 70 degrees. So it's that delta T that's our ideal. So we could call that T3 minus T1. And then our numerator is what we actually get. What is the actual amount of heating that happens? We go from one to two. So we get some heating, but we probably don't get so much as to say we're going all the way to T3. So that'd be something like T2 minus T1, which is going to be less. And you know the the largest this can ever be is 100%. But in most practical cases, it's going to be less than 100%. So that's the sensible effectiveness. So if somebody says, "What's the effectiveness of a sensible heating device like an air-to-air -air heat exchanger?" This is the formula you use. If somebody says, "What is the sensible effectiveness 
of an energy recovery device, this is the formula you use. If somebody just says, what's the effectiveness of an enthalpy wheel, which is an energy recovery device, they probably mean what's the total effectiveness. So let's use the same picture. Nothing's changing. The only thing that's changing is that instead of only sensible heat going across the boundary Q dot S, we have also latent heat crossing the boundary, so moisture. And if that's the case, then it becomes possible for us to calculate the total effectiveness. And now the formula is going to be exactly the same, except instead of temperatures, it's going to be enthalpies. And all the same reasoning applies in terms of, whoops, I wrote T. <laughs> I'm programmed for sensible here. H1 over H3 minus H1 which is the maximum possible. Same reasoning applies for using enthalpies. And by the way, it's also possible for an energy recovery of a device, not as common that they'll ask this, but they could certainly ask it, that they may want to know the latent effectiveness. And that would be the same thing with humidity ratios. And the same reasoning applies. So the humidity ratio at two minus the humidity ratio at one divided by the humidity ratio at three minus the humidity ratio at one. Now, of course, I could turn all these arrows around and make these ones on the top point to the left and the ones in the bottom point to the right. And I could screw around with the numbers and say, I wanna use a different numbering convention. But my hope is that you'll remember that what's maximally possible is the difference between what's going on, what's coming from outside and what's leaving from inside. That's what's gonna define your denominator. It's that delta that dictates what the maximum possible is. So that's how we're arriving at the denominator. And then the numerator is the difference of what we actually get. So you could imagine this would be uh, cooling, a summer operation instead of a winter operation. And maybe if you do this subtraction, you get a negative number and you say, oh no, I got the wrong formula. Well, you're gonna get a negative number in the denominator as well. So it's gonna cancel. So you might end up reasoning it out and saying, no, it's T1 minus T2 over T1 minus T3. And that's equally valid for that summer operation. So that's why I don't just open the reference handbook, point to the formula and say, you know, job done. Because, you know, if you don't have this intuition, then you're going to see a problem and you're going to just be walking on eggshells, afraid that you're going to make a wrong substitution and um, much better to have a deep understanding of what these devices are, how these systems work. And um, you almost don't need the reference handbook at that point.